Hello. Oops. Hello, is this John Stewart? Yes. Hi, John. This is Amy Wolfing. How are you? Hi, how are you, Amy? Good. Thank you so much for talking to me. Sure, sure. I just wanted to talk to you for a couple of minutes about your experiences there. There was, if you recall, there was no place. There was nothing else. There was no other place. Listen, if there was another place to go see those bands in, in, in Trenton, don't you think we would have gone there? <laughs> well, were you going to? you really to... <laughs> think we would have gone to Calhoun Street? <laughs> It was a really filthy club. We were robbed while we were on stage. I walked into the bathroom and there was this dude crumpled up on the floor with blood uh, running down his head. It was the most dangerous place to ever go. I was told over and over again, don't go there. You'll get your head kicked in, skinheads. It's, it's just a rough, rough place. The first night that I remember going, I went with some people, some college girls, and we went in and you know we're listening to the music and watching people dance. And then when we left afterward, one of the girls said, "Oh, I recognize quite a few people there." And she was a psych major at Trenton State at the time. And I said, "Oh, would you recognize some students or something?" She goes, "No, I work at the psych ward, and I recognized a lot of patients." There was so much violence, like every couple of songs something would happen and then all the bald heads would kind of mob out the door following the fight. Uh, the Exploited took a rash of shit like I've never seen a band take. But I remember me and Tony looking at each other like, holy shit, your skinhead's gonna come back here and beat the shit out of our little 13, 14 year old asses. <laughs> now then you had Randy in the middle of all that, who was like the nicest, sweetest guy. Not at all he would expect to be booking this place. Because most time when you play, play a place like that, it's usually some really kind of grizzled and slimy, creepy person. Or Randy's always like, hey, I love your band. Come on, let's make music. Let's do a show. Welcome to the house of now. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be the dining room. All CDs on the walls. Met John Lennon in 1975 in Philadelphia. I had a chance to meet him. I was drumming in my band and we actually did Twist and Shout. This is the basement, but I had a bunch of bobbleheads. A lot of people collect uh, baseball bobbleheads. Um, actually, there's one here with his head fell off. Here's Have a Jewish Christmas. Of course, Pac-Man Christmas. Everybody needs a Pac-Man Christmas album. This is a really rare Scatolites album. When I tour managed the Scatolites, Scott Booby. Um, most of the guys were still alive then. They're all dead now, I believe. Um, Christmas with the Colonel Sanders. There's a couple of them. Here's a Desmond Decker album from the 60s. Fitness records, burlesque records, how to belly dance for your husband, how to strip for your husband. Easy instructions. The great thing about what Randy had done at City Gardens in general was to bring bands there that you didn't have a chance to see anywhere else. It just didn't happen. City Gardens for touring bands was an oasis. Maybe 5,000, 10,000 kids would show up. Geographically located between Philadelphia and New York. Nothing will compare to seeing a band like Nine Inch Nails there, seeing a band like Soundgarden there. People could be more of an individual there, I think. I think you didn't care about how that group of people sees me or what I'm wearing is right. And you knew that really came from Randy. Oh yeah, everything came from Randy. It was 100% Randy, you know. We, uh, the guy Frank that owned the place, he hated us. This is actually a little weepy here because I worked here, I guess about 10 years, nine, 10 years. A lot of people may not know is that Randy had a day job when he wasn't busy uh, trying to make things happen in City Gardens. He was a U.S. postman. Randy Ellis and City Gardens, to me, I actually believe that those guys didn't make any fucking money.
now at 54 and the way the economy is and, and how I'm really not making any money, you know, um, uh, I have no retirement, you know, um, it's all gone. I think somebody made a lot of money there. I know it probably wasn't Randy. Um, but otherwise the place wouldn't be open, you know. No, you know, it's not charity. You're the star of the show, Randy. What can we say? And like everybody in the music industry, you're broke. <laughs> I think Randy was a music fan. I think Randy loved good music. And I think Randy had great taste. You know, he loves he loves music, even though it's kicked him on his ass. I can't even break down how important he was to 20 years of my life. Okay, everybody, let's go. We got a second night. Take a look around and listen for the 